Bastille. 8.15 is your time. I'm Rain Sergeant Jack Nosk, and I'm in, back in the studio with Sergeant Major Mario Marquez and Mari, and we're going to be talking about some stuff you probably didn't know about, especially if you're living off base. So, yes, uh, you know, PCS season's over, and we have a lot of new families and, and uh, single uh, service members and friends that are now living with us. And if you didn't know, previously we had about one quarter of Americans that lived off base, and with the uh, renovation and, and uh, maintenance of a lot of housing units on base, there is now up to one-third of the American population what a that big increase. live out in town. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a huge increase. And I tell you, it's so important that we get into these communities and we settle in properly. And um, so one of the things that people don't know about is what to do once you move out in town. There's actually some some etiquette that uh, is kind of expected and that maybe right. not necessarily enforced. Yeah, it's expected. It's not written down anywhere. You probably just have to know. Yeah, but and how do you how do you know if you don't know? Right. <laughs> one and of so those that's, things. That's what we're going to talk about today. And Marty's going to educate us on a lot of that detail. Um, but ap- approximately 65% of the Japanese population actually does what we're going to talk about today. So I'm really excited. And uh, so Marty's going to do a little bit of an uh, introduction on what we're going to talk about. So in the States, what do you do when you move into a new community? You get brownies and apple pie you for usually, no reason. Right. <laughs> People come to you. It's, I feel like especially in a military community, you move into base and all these neighbors come to you with, mm-hmm. you know, gifts and they introduce yourselves. Um, yeah. And that's how that's how it starts, you know, your neighbor neighborly relationship. But actually in Japan, it's the complete opposite. Totally opposite. Totally opposite. You move into a neighborhood and what happens? <laughs> you. I, mean, I would assume <laughs> that they bring me stuff, no. you know. If you don't, if you don't, you have to be the one to go see your neighbors. And actually, there's um, you. You have to bring a gift. You mm-hmm. have to bring a note. Um, there's uh, different etiquettes about what to do if they're not home. Um, what to bring? What kind of things to bring? Um, are flowers appropriate? Are food appropriate? All kinds of stuff. But the point is that you have to be the one. You got to be the go, one to reach out. Yes, go and reach out to say hello. And they're also, you know, who to reach out. Do you go say hi to five houses down? Yeah, or? That's, actually, that was even my next question. What's the radius? What, what if you're in, a, in an apartment? Yeah, do you yeah. go to each floor? <laughs> so or do you so, just go to the ones to your left and your right? Yeah, so what we're going to do is if you take all these different uh, tools that we're going to teach you and tips today, um, it's going to set you on the right tone and put the right atmosphere into your neighborhood. Uh, and it's, and it's going to also help you spread the word to other Americans. So. Uh, living in Japan is an amazing experience. We're excited to talk about it today, and Marty's going to teach us a little bit more about that here uh, coming up shortly. So we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Thank you, Mari. We got more coming your way, so don't you dare go anywhere. 11 blocks. Your sea condition is east caution. Your yen rate is 110 yen per your U.S. dollar. I got Mari in the studio, and she's going to be explaining some more of the Japanese customs and the manner of the new move-in. Mari, take it away. <laughs> All right. So, you move into a new neighborhood in Japan. What do you do? First, you're going to need to, right when you move in, that day is your perfect timing to go and say hi to your new neighbors. So, you can go go say hi. You don't have to necessarily bring a gift. You can say, hi, I'm here. Okay, sorry. Yeah, bring a gift. Okay. And that gift's going to be anywhere between 500 yen to 1,000 yen. So, we're not talking about expensive gifts. We're talking about things... Um, you can probably for example, go to like the dye zone and find something. Well, huh? yeah, but we want to keep it American. We're gonna okay. keep, we're gonna, we're gonna try to keep it, keep it American because um, in Japan the typical gift is gonna be kitchen towels, uh, kitchen mm-hmm. detergent, housewarming gifts, practical things. Right. But survey shows the Japanese like to get cookies, especially if they have kids. Yeah. They can kind of pass it around with the kids and family. Mm-hmm. But. Um, I like cookies. The, right. I, I like cookies too. So <laughs> <laughs> but the idea here is that you know you're American. You move into a Japanese neighborhood. They they're gonna want something American from you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. my advice, my personal advice that I've given to others too, is um, just run over to the BX PX, buy you know a cute tin can of cookies or something. Like the shortbread cookies. Yeah, those would be perfect actually. Or go have a chocolate, something American, more mm-hmm. American. And um, wrap it up nicely. That's when Daiso comes in handy because they've got lots of, you know, gift bags and wrapping paper. Um, so wrap it up nicely because presentation is usually almost just as important. 
mm -hmm. in Japan as the, as, the, as the actual gift itself. Yeah, I think the surprise of, you know, the outside looks Japanese, but they're, it gets them all excited. And they, on the inside is this really awesome, nice American gift that they cannot get. It's not readily available mm -hmm. to them on a daily basis. And I think that's what's important. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, you're going you're gonna to want to try to have that ready on the day of your move-in or at least Within the week, Good you want to go say. Good thing I keep say, a stash of cookies. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> keep a stash of cookies. Girl Scouts, where you at? <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah. But keep, yeah, keep, go within a week, or the neighbors are going to start wondering why you haven't come over to say hi, mm. and um, who to say hi to. If you're living in a home, single story home, single home, then you're going to want to say hi to the home immediate to your right, right and left, and front and back. Uh -huh. And then also and at a so, diagonal. So. so and also a diagonal. <laughs> you want to hit the back. north. You want to hit the east and west. And you want to hit the south. Uh, yes. Yeah. Is that, that is okay. your immediate, almost. I want almost want to say requirement. Like okay. so, it forms a little square around your house. Gotcha. That's okay. you know, who are you going to see the most? You know. And the, on you the fill in the gaps too. So the 45 degree angle, yeah. catty corner to your front left, front right, back left, back right. Those homes as well. Okay. And then apartments. Oh right, apartments. You're going to go say hi to the people to your right, to your left, and also don't forget the people above you and below you. When your kids are stomping all over right. making I, noise. I imagine those uh -huh. people above you are very important to say hi to because you don't want them <laughs> trying to be me stomping around. Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you have kids, you know, it's a good idea to bring them, bring them along mm -hmm. and uh, introduce them and bring a note along with you. Just uh, spell out what your name is. Uh, what your kids' names are, maybe their ages. Um, but just take that first initiative to go out and greet them and say hi and introduce it's your yourself. Job. Yeah, because you know, that's just what, the courteous thing to do. Yes. Yeah. And I, that's what actually they expect you to do. Mm -hmm. And as it's Americans, it's, it's our responsibility to learn the ways of, of the locals, right? When, when in Rome is the old phrase, but. Do as the Romans do. Right. That's right. So uh, the last thing I'll leave you here before I pass it over to Marty for one more comment is. Um, we're going to set up a Facebook page with all these tips. Uh, it should be done by the end of the week, and it's 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 her and my page that's going to focus just on everything we talk about here, mm -hmm. so that people can follow up and always have access to those tips. And so that that's going to be something that's coming out here soon, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get that information out um, to to all of our listeners, and we're looking forward to actually getting that put out there. Great, thank you, Sergeant Major. I... Monty, any last words before we? Um. Okay, so. Lastly, um, if you go if you if you go to your neighbor's house and say they're not home, then keep trying again. Go the next day, the following day, but act, don't ever leave a gift on the doorknob because actually that's considered rude. Oh, <laughs> don't do it. But if they have a mailbox, you can hang it on the mailbox. So but just doorknob, not the doorknob. Is a, doorknob is not okay. Not okay. Mailbox is okay. Mailbox is okay. And don't mention to them that you visited them over and over, but they were not home. Say when when you actually reach the neighbor and they're home, say to them that you're sorry that it's taken you a long time it's your fault. to come to <laughs> Yes, because yeah. it's your fault. <laughs> don't make it their fault. Right. So a lot of Americans today are wondering why their neighbors don't really interact or engage or talk to them right now. Because you never it's, brought it's them a because gift. It's, yeah. we, it's we never did that and we never took that initial step. It's not that they they just don't know how to approach you. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't want to be rude either. But gotcha. It, and if just you kind of do this, you're just gonna set the tone completely different. You know, the environment, the neighborhood. It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be, it's gonna be different. Yeah, right. You're absolutely. gonna have a better relationship with them. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. before you know it, you'll be having uh, barbecues. That's yeah. Right. Sharing a couple of drinks. <laughs> kids playing together. Yeah, that's yeah. what we want. Dogs playing together. Yeah. That's, that's right. Cool. That's right. That's what you want. Neighborhood that's, cookouts. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh -huh. how a neighborhood should be. Everyone mm -hmm. should get along and uh, enjoy each yeah. other's time. And knowing this cultural difference is, you know, one of the first steps. Exactly. Step yeah. one, Step buy one. some cookies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to be right back. Something wild. You're listening to the Eagle on Wave 89. I'm back in the studio with Sergeant Major Mario Marquez and Mari. And uh, we got someone to call out, so actually. Ruthie had a question. Ruthie, big Ruthie. Ruthie I just Hello, got a question Ruthie. from Ruthie. Ruthie. Calling you up. <laughs> So, Ruthie asked, what about home-baked lemon bread or cookies? Now, for some people, this is uh, a little controversial, right? Mm -hmm. I would say yes. I course. personally had Ruthie's lemon bread, so I would love some. But <laughs> Go ahead, bring me some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in Japan, people will hesitate a little bit 
getting a home baked um, anything from somebody that they've never met. Some stranger. Some stranger, because that's what they see you as, stranger. Mm -hmm. They so just see I, you as some stranger. Yeah, <laughs> I recommend. I personally recommend um, save the home baked goods until a little bit down the road when you get to know your neighbors. But initially, something store bought. Yeah, initially so. something store bought, mm -hmm. and then once you build that relationship and they know you're oh, you're yeah. an okay person, mm -hmm. then you can start bringing over the, yep. the home baked goods. Start doing the potlucks and stuff like that. That's definitely. Right. <laughs> yeah, so great. And, and then uh, we also have some more general tips. More general to tips. Cover. Yes. Um, always remember uh, when you gift something to anybody, use use both hands to give to them. Yes, both and hands. they will receive with both hands and always add a little bow because, you know, Japan is it's a very respectful. bowing yes. country mm -hmm. too, respectful. gifting and bowing. So they go hand in hand. Um, more gifting ideas. If you're invited to a housewarming party, <laughs> <laughs> do not bring anything red because red is going to make them think of fire fire, fire. Right. and that is kind of wishing them that your house is going to burn down and yeah, that's not, not what good. you want it's not a good look so <laughs> and if you don't know it's one of those things if yeah. you don't know you don't know that's yeah right. just don't you bought anything. them this cool red tin <laughs> but they're, they're gonna... like wow do you want me you want my house to burn down what's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you um and i also had a question before what to bring to somebody in the hospital what kind of flowers or gifts? Um, now, this one has a lot of rules. Yes. It, it I mean, Very fruit um, is a good idea to bring. Flowers in general, but not chrysanthemums because I mentioned it in a uh, last month show. Yellow and white chrysanthemums are funeral flowers, mm -hmm. so definitely Ooh, avoid okay. those. Yeah. Um, and don't bring anything that has roots, so and nothing potted. <laughs> no potted plants because that represents... Deep-rooted De illness. Deep-rooted illness. It's stain. Deep-rooted illness kind <laughs> of They're hinting that, this hey, you deep. might you this might be deep. in the hospital for a long time. Yeah. Whoa. So you and, don't want that. Yeah, and for the flower shops, you, you kind of understand that there, there's flower shops that are just for funerals. Mm -hmm. So you got to so kind of know where you're out. going. Uh, <laughs> you you got to ask around and make sure you're going to the right flower shops. Right. And <laughs> my advice, um, pick, find, find a local florist and uh, go to them. Tell them um, this is for a hospital visit. This is for a friend who had a baby. This is for somebody's anniversary. Um, say that your your budget's say 2,000 yen or 3,000 yen. They'll hook you up. And they will hook you up. They know what to do. So I'd say that's the best course of action. Go to your local florist and let them have at it. Very nice. Yep. Find that local florist. Yeah. So once again, no chrysanthemums. No chrysanthemums. No roots. <laughs> right. No red. No red. No re oh, no red for the hospital flowers, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I asked. kind of gave it away. Yeah. yeah. Zombies. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got a couple uh, kind of other comments just in general. Mm -hmm. So th this is a show about cultural awareness and, and, and you know, learning things from that Mari and, and many others have uh, from being raised and growing up in Japan. But, uh, you know, I want to rem remind everyone that everything we talk about on this show and everything we do on a daily basis here is really warming for the Japanese. It really is relationship building. And um, all these all this good work work we put in on a daily basis can really be thrown away by by the actions of a, of a few so uh, i ask that we always be aware especially on social media be careful mm -hmm. what you're saying on there there's a lot of japanese on our social media and all they have to do is hit that little thing that says translate, translate. Mm -hmm. and they have now translated what you said yep. and so just just be careful i'm not going to get too much into that today but uh, i think it's very important um, for future shows, there's some some uh, exciting topics coming up. We're going to talk about the holidays. The Japanese do celebrate holidays, right, Muddy? Yeah, they do. Uh, if you go to the AOM Mall during Christmas time, oh. you go notice there's Christmas direct decorations everywhere. And now Christmas there's trees Halloween and everywhere. Yeah. yeah the, the you know, when I was growing up, when I was little, growing up in mainland Japan, there was no Halloween. This is something new. This is new, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And it's six. I mean, the kids, they all... You know, we're going to do trunk or treat here coming up mm -hmm. on a lot of the bases, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to be out there on uh, what's, uh, what's our, our, our local. Uh, well, I don't want to reveal the the, <laughs> the host, but uh, Debbie uh, has invited <laughs> me to, to get out and uh, do trunk or treat. So I'll be out there with my van spooking kids on uh, Halloween. 
Uh, what are you going to be dressed up as? I, I don't know yet. I'm still. Okay. I might be the invisible man. All right. I was going to. I was going <laughs> to give the kids ideas. a heads up. <laughs> if you see a zombie walking around, it's probably Sergeant Major Marquez. How about? Scary. How about we put it out to the population and they they make some recommendations and. Ooh, that's uh, a good idea. Let me know what you think. Uh, Message our Facebook, <laughs> Facebook.com/slash/wave89. There, you know, <laughs> there you go. Let Let Sergeant Major Marquez know what he should dress up as. Yes, yes, and that would that would be uh, that's going to be interesting. So keep it clean, please. Um, and then the last couple things, it's uh, um, we're also going to we're going to talk about some community relations specialists that work with us on all of our bases here in the near future, uh, and just looking forward to to keeping the show going. We're we're considering doing it a little more frequently, so more to follow on that. I'm getting a lot of good feedback. Um, and then the last thing I want to say before I give Marty one more set of comments is um, I want to thank all of you for your for your conduct. I want to thank all of you for hosting parties, getting everybody home safe. We've done amazingly well this 96, and I'm so proud of all of you. We control our own morale. Every single one of you contributes to the policies that get set or don't get set here. And uh, right now, I'm very inclined to keeping things going in the right direction. So thank you so much for doing the right thing, all of you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Pat on the back. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Marty, any last words? Um... Just keep listening to our radio show. There's going to be lots of great tips coming up um, on a future shows. So. Yeah, lots so of learning hope you happened. Stay, tu <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah, Facebook page soon to follow. Yes. Great. Awesome. Thank you again for uh, coming in. Thanks for having and, us. Uh, yeah, it was it was a blast. Awesome. Good, good times, everybody.